Hey everybody, Mr. Morell here. And in this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be reviewing scaling of vectors. That's something we did right before the uh, closure. And we're gonna be adding vectors in this video. Now, this is gonna be our last new honors content stuff. Uh, initially, our plan was to teach you about negative vectors and to teach you adding vectors, which we will do, and subtracting vectors. We wanted to do that as well, but we're going to do the best we can with the time that we've got. So in this video, we're going to review scaling and then we're going to do adding. So let's start by reviewing scaling. So here we go. If I have vector V, this is the same vector I used in the last video, but I wanted to use this just as a quick reminder because repetition is good. Um, yeah, so let's start with vector V. I want to talk about how to find the components and the magnitude and we'll do it pretty quickly. So remember, the components of that vector are going to be how we're moving from the initial point to the terminal point, and we're doing it kind of like an ordered pair, left and right first, up and down second. So over here, this vector is going to be over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 1, 2, 3, 4. So the way we write it is we have to use triangle brackets because this is a vector. So let me start with that. I'm going to make it red so that it matches our color. So we've got triangle brackets over five, down four, triangle brackets, okay? So those are the components. Now the magnitude is the length. We're basically gonna use the dimensions of a triangle to help us get there. And you can see this is gonna be a five here and a four right here. Or if you want to, you could use your components. They're right there, so why not? If you're looking at the picture with the triangle, this is five squared plus four squared, and then we would have to take the square root. If we're using the components, this number squared plus this number squared, but be extra careful when you square negative four, you need to use parentheses to get a 16. If you don't use parentheses, you're gonna get negative 16. Either way, five squared plus four squared is 41. So we're gonna go ahead and put that there. But then don't forget that your last step that you're gonna to need to do is to take the square root. I don't have a square root button, so I'm just gonna draw it in like this. So that's the exact length. This length is exactly the square root of 41. And if we use our calculator, we can calculate the approximate length, which would be uh, 6.403. So we'll go ahead and make that red so you can see it really nicely. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and get rid of this writing over here. And let's talk about scaling. Now, if you remember back to eighth grade, when you scale a shape, you either make it bigger or smaller, but it stays the same proportions. They look the same. Same thing with a vector. If we wanted to scale this vector by a factor of two, so two of vector V, that basically means we're just taking this vector, uh, here, let's put it right here and making it twice as long, sorry. So really this would be one big vector, but I'm using the two little vectors as an example. And here, just for kicks and giggles, why don't I come in here, we're gonna make that vector blue as we make a new one right on top of that, just for clarity. Okay, so really we're looking at this one big vector right here, but the idea is that that's made out of these two little vectors. That's scaling. You could even go smaller. We could look at half of vector V or a third of vector V or whatever. Anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and type the components. So let me set that up by making sure we've got good colors because that's important for me apparently. Okay, so this new vector, well, it's two copies of this one. The original one went over five. So two copies must mean that we're going over 10. So let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yep, that looks good. So we know we're going over 10 and we should be going down eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, that is true. So we've got a new set of components that is 10 and negative eight. Sweet. Now we're gonna find the magnitude. Now you have to be careful. I recognize that to go from this set of components to this set of components, we multiplied by two. And so like five times two is 10, negative four times two is eight, that's true. And I know that this is twice the length. Where you wanna be careful is this. You might wanna say that the length is the square root of 41, or sorry, the square root of 82, 
because that would, would seem like it's twice as long. But that's not true. If I type in the square root of 82 into my calculator, the square root of 82 is a length of 9.06. So definitely not twice as long. So let's just go the old way. 10 squared is 100. Negative 8 squared is 64. So this is going to be not 164, but it's going to be the square root of 164. So let's go ahead and put that there. And let's make those blue just so that we can be clear. Now, in theory, the square root of 64 should be around 12.8. So let's type that in. Square root of 64, I got out my calculator. That is 12.81 if you're rounding. 12.81. So that might feel a little odd. How come it's not just 12.80? Well, the trick is you have to remember that we were rounding. And so, I mean, in some ways you kind of can just double this approximate number, but it's an approximation. So doubling it will give you like a less clear approximation. So anyway, that's just a quick review about scaling vectors. Now let's move on to the new stuff. So we're going to have two vectors here. I'm going to add two vectors together. We've already found all of the information for vector v. It's right here. Here's vector v. And now we're going to have a new vector. I'm going to call it vector n. So let's find the components for vector n. It looks like it's going back 1. So negative 1, comma, and up 3. So we're going to put a 3 right there. Let's make it blue for clarity. Okay, now components, you can e or magnitude, you can either look at your components or you can use your picture. So this is a base of one, a height of three, or we've got negative one and three. So negative one squared is positive one, plus three squared is nine. So one plus nine is 10. So the length of vector n is the square root of 10. Let me use my calculator really fast. Square root of 10 is 3.16. That's the approximate length. All right. Now that's going to become helpful for us in just one second as we look at adding the vectors together. Okay. Now, two ways to think about adding vectors together. We could think of the components and we got to think about the picture. So if we're adding these together, let me go ahead and show you. We can add the components like normal. Here's vector v. Here's vector n. Let's go ahead, oops, and I want to type in some components. So the idea here is we should just be able to add straight down. 5 plus negative 1 is 4, comma, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So there are the components for this new vector that is v plus n. So let me just type that over here as well. So we had four comma negative one. That's gonna be this right here. Okay, so <clears throat> what I wanna what I wanna cautious, caution us with is this idea that we added to get these numbers. That's true. But that's not gonna work by adding these numbers or adding these numbers. So let's go the usual long way to find the magnitude of this vector. And then I'm going to talk about the picture. So the magnitude of this vector is going to be 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. So that's going to be 16 plus 1 is the square root of 17, which is crazy. That has nothing to do with 41 or 10 at all. That's definitely not the square root of 51 or anything like it. And then if I take the square root of 17, that's going to be 4.12. Which is even weirder because we started with this vector and added this vector and our number got smaller. It's not even subtracted. It's just this random looking number. So that is how you would add vectors with the components. You would just add the numbers. But then to get the magnitude, you would just have to find the magnitude of this new one. But this is going to be important, especially on your homework. When you add vectors with a picture, here's the idea of what's happening. Let's imagine, um, a, I don't know, a star, because I have a star right here. 
Okay, so vectors are huge in animation. That's kind of why it's a, a big curriculum thing is because it's very computer -y. Let's say vector V is telling you to animate this star to move this direction and this amount. And right after that, this vector, remember this vector can be moved anywhere. So this vector is saying, okay, once you've moved the star this way, we're gonna move the star this way. So we're gonna move the star first along vector A. And now we wanna move it along vector N, which is down here. So the general idea is adding vectors is just like two directions that we wanna to put together. So I'm actually gonna slide this vector up here and it's gonna basically tell your star to also move here, okay? I know that's a little bit weird and confusing, but the general idea is when you add vectors, you're basically giving two sets of directions to the same object. So you're saying move the star this way first and then move the star this way. Now, when we add vectors in a picture, you're basically trying to simplify that movement. Instead of doing two movements, one, two, you want to tell it to just do one movement to go from here to here. Okay, we're starting here and ending here. So let me get rid of that star for an example and show you kind of the setup. The way I've set this up is we had our first vector drawn and then we tacked the second vector right here. Now I use kind of a, a crass way to remember this. I think of this as the butt of a vector and this is the head of the red vector. So as I'm moving, we have butt, head, butt, head, and then our answer is gonna be, let me set that up here for us nicely so we have a green one, green, butt, head. All right, so starting with red, butt, head, we move the other vector, so we have butt, head, and then our answer is gonna go from the butt of the first vector to the head of the second vector. Now, if you don't believe me, take a look. What would the components of this green vector be? Looks like this green vector is going over four, down one. Over four, down one. So when you add your components, let me just say that one more time, okay, I'm gonna move stuff out of the way. When you add vectors, you're starting with your first vector. You're gonna put the butt of the second vector with the head of the first vector. And then you're gonna draw your answer from the butt to the head. All sorts of butt heads going on right here. So the reason why this is important for me is you're gonna need to know how to do this with pictures and you'll always be able to check your work with your components. So I just added my numbers here to get this new vector, added to get the new vector, and you could check in your picture to make sure it's really going over four, down one, and my final picture does look like this. So the butt of the first to the head of the second, okay? Man, I know that that's kind of tricky. Obviously, we would have spent several days on this kind of a lesson, but we're doing the best we can. But there is your lesson about adding vectors. You can watch it again if you need. And of course, there will be hints in your uh, assignment videos. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Make good choices. Bye.